Seven segment displays can be boring. And how do you make something more exciting? Well, of course, explosions. But first, I'm gonna quickly explain what a seven segment display is and how we plan on our fancy seven segment display to function. So a seven segment display is a component which displays a number between naught and nine by retracting and extending a bunch of blocks or lighting up and delighting a bunch of lights. So we can make use of this to, for example, create a zero, an eight, a six, and a bunch of other letters, like for example, a five, and we can create all of the different numbers using redstone logic. But how are we gonna make this fancier? Well, the idea is that we're gonna have a setup like this. For example, we've got the eight displayed here, and we'll drop some TNT down from the ceiling and explode this letter. And then what we do is we use some redstone logic to rebuild the letter using either a basalt generator, a stone generator, or a cobblestone generator. I'm kind of tempted to do both, so that we can switch between all three types, but I'll see how excited we get. Because I think the basalt generator one's going to look the coolest, because it will blend in with the netherite background. The question that you might be having though, is how are we going to stop the background from being blown up? And I've already thought of this, we're going to use netherite blocks to prevent the background from being blown up. So if we come behind here, what we're going to do is we're not going to permanently have netherite there, because we want a nice contrasting background. So we're going to have some redstone that pushes netherite across behind the seven segment display and then it blows it up. The first thing to figure out is if we can blow up this whole seven segment display with a single piece of TNT. So we're gonna first activate the dispenser and we're gonna wait a bit and then we're gonna activate this and lower it down. And it does seem to actually blow up slightly further than that, which is not what we really want. So ideally we won't want any of the stuff behind to be damaged by the explosion at all. I believe that this is the optimum distance for the TNT so that it doesn't blow up any of the back wall. So let's give this a test. So we're going to power the TNT and remove all of the blocks around and see what it explodes. And it doesn't seem to explode any of the back wall. Now, I do actually think we might be able to avoid using netherite altogether. It is funny because I thought this would only be made possible by netherite and simply just use quartz all around. So let's put quartz all around and have a look and see if it actually gets exploded because I don't think it will. So we'll have it like this. We'll have the TNT here on this block and of course that'll be dropped down from the ceiling so that it explodes at the right height so we won't need any redstone in front. Then of course we've got to have some blocks around to align it which would all be done up above. Then we activate the TNT, remove all of the blocks around and see if it explodes any of the back wall and it doesn't. So I've built this little circuit up here which will drop TNT down and I've got to test all the different heights or should I say the different delays to generate the different heights to see which will blow up the most. So this is an example and that has gone way too low so we're going to need to use a longer pulse extender. And I think this stage is going to require a fair bit of fiddling to get working. So let's try this one. I have a feeling this one might actually explode Oh, and I've got to put of course some more TNT inside here. So let's give it a test with a longer pulse extender. I am worried it's going to explode though. Yeah, that was too long. So it's going to be hard to generate the right pulse length, but I think we can manage it. I've come up with this little system here where by eating the cake, we can extend the delay. So as you can see, we have a certain length delay. If we eat the cake, we get a longer delay. If we eat the cake some more, we get a longer delay, etc., etc. And the way this works is by just changing the signal strength coming into the pulse extender so it lasts for a different amount of time. So I think it's time to test it with some actual TNT and that looks the closest in length to what we need. So let's put a couple of pieces of TNT in there and give this a test. And I'm well aware this is probably still going to explode. And that's far too low down. So we're going to eat some more cake and hope we don't explode our redstone, which is something that I am worried is going to happen. Getting the delays to be just right is a massive pain. I believe that we may have started to get close to the sweet spot for the redstone, so let's activate it after changing up the pulse extender some and just have a look and see what it blows up. So that seems to get the top half, so I'm just going to do this a couple of times and see if we can actually get any of the bottom half, but I think we're going to have to extend it slightly, the delay, because we're not quite getting all of the basalt at the bottom. 
After fiddling about with the redstone for a bit, I've come up with this solution. Now, it's not the most compact in the world, but it does work. And it works, I'm pretty sure, 100% of the time. Meaning that it blows up every single block. So, let's give a demonstration. We've got just got the pulse extender. You can see how the TNT works. It's all aligned perfectly so that it blows up all of the blocks. Then, of course, we'd push them out again for the next number. And I'll just show you once more just to prove that it is indeed reliable. And I've done plenty more of these tests, um, more than just the two that I'm showing you, just to make sure that it does work all the time and it seems to work. So we're now using three TNT. We've got a little pusher over here. Let's just watch that. It pushes across the TNT here so that they can all be aligned perfectly. We've got trap doors to get the height right. We've got um, target blocks just to redirect the redstone so that it goes into these, which I thought was neat because of the new target block functionality in 1.16. You may now notice a few changes to the design. So we've added these two wings on the side, which are going to push some blocks behind the seven segment display. So we get a nice flush quartz background. The irony of this is that I'd actually decided um, to use a different system than I'm going to be using currently, using the piston push limit with the blocks over there. And what ended up happening was after I did the explanation, edited all the clips together, I realized that actually we could do this in a much simpler way, which is the way I'm telling you now, because I've got rid of all the clips from the old explanation. So <laughs> let's go through how the system's gonna work. So we've got our number displayed here, and you may notice that we've got some basalt behind. So say the number six was displayed, we'd actually end up with a basalt piece there, which makes it really difficult to see that it's a number six and not the number eight. So to get around this system, well, around this problem, we can use this over here, which pushes quartz blocks behind the thing so that it's very clear that this is a number six and not a number eight. Then what we can do is we can actually explode the number six. And I found that this doesn't actually explode any of the quartz behind. So let's watch it and we shall see that actually we get a completely blank quartz background. Then what we can do is push it in from the other side so we get our basalt forming there and then using these pistons behind we can generate a new number. So let's generate, I don't know, <laughs> number seven, I guess. It's gonna be a bit of a funky seven but we can control how those work. So yeah, we've got a number seven and then we simply power this side again to get the nice quartz background and you can see that it really does look like a number seven. So what we're able to do now is create the numbers, but the next step I think is to do the logic. So we need to include the basalt generators, add the logic for the seven segment display to decide which segments extend or which pistons extend to create the specific number that the player selected. And then we need to hook everything up so that it pulses in the right sequence of the TNT, the two side wings and the pistons back there. So I'm gonna to cut to you when I've done all of that and hopefully we should have a working system. So we're not done yet. However, I have made a bunch of progress, um, which I wanted to show you before we move on to the final step. So this pink circuit over here is a regular seven segment display counter. I'll leave a link up in the top right of your screen to one of those. Um, and in fact, it's this exact one. Um, you input a signal strength through this bottom line here and then it lights up various redstone lines which correspond to each segment of the seven segment display. So I've just redirected these lines in this big clump here down to our piston wall over here. And I've actually had to stagger the pistons so that we don't get any bud powering going on and we can power each one individually. I'm also doing some funky business with some lights over here to light all the specific ones up and make sure that the corners light up. And that's basically that. I've also added in the basalt generators down the bottom here, so we'd simply power this piston and it would push up the basalt here up until this point. And there should be obsidian above there to stop it going any further. So that's how the basalt generates with the soul soil and the blue ice and the lava, which is a new feature in 1.16. The pistons don't power until we activate this blue line, which pushes these blocks in front of the lines so that we activate the pistons. So now it's time for a demonstration. It's currently displaying a number five and if we activate the TNT up here, we can actually blow up that number five like so. And now that number five is gone, we can activate this line over here so that we get our basalt sort of hole appearing. Then what we do is we can obviously select our new number. So we currently had five selected. So this time let's change that to number six by activating the other lever. And then we activate this blue line to power our piston wall 
deactivate it, and then we can fill the blocks back in with the salt. And we can come around the front and we activate this over here, which pushes the quartz back behind. And as you can see, we're displaying the number six. So this is pretty fancy, but we have yet to hook up all of the different components together to operate in sequence. So that's the next thing I'm going to hook up. So I'll see you once I've done that. And done that we have. As you can see in front of me, I have got the seven segment display, which is currently displaying a number zero. And I've also switched out all of the back blocks for diamond blocks, since this is the fanciest redstone seven segment display that we can create. So why not use diamond blocks? So down the bottom here, we've got our selector panel. We can select any number from zero to nine. So for example, let's select a four and then we can press the update display button. And then after a couple of seconds, we'll see some TNT drop down from the ceiling as we expect. It blows up the basalt display. We get that being pushed across. The new number is pushed out and the diamond blocks are pushed back behind the basalt display. And you can hear the basalt being generated right now. We can do this with any number. So we can do this with, for example, the number two as well. And when we update the display, we have the TNT drop down from the ceiling. It will explode the number four. And then we get everything slide into place and we get the number two to appear. So as you can see, it looks really cool. We've got the nice black basalt outline and the redstone is not actually awful. I mean, it is fairly huge, but it's not too bad. So what have we added since the last update when I was describing all of the blue redstone over here? We've, of course, added this purple line from the button up to the top circuitry. We've also added um, this yellow line over here, which just redirects the signal strength into this pink circuit. And we also have done a bunch of lines hooking up between all of the circuits. So from the top activation circuit, we've got a secondary pulse extender that leads down here. We've got a falling edge detector that will then pulse this um, side over here when the pulse extender runs out. Then we've got that um, with a delay going into the blue circuit, which extends the basalt. Then we've got a, another pulse extender here, and this one pulses a clock to regenerate the basalt. At the same time as that, we then have the, um, we've got a monostable here, a falling edge monostable again, and that just pulses this other side to push the diamond blocks back into place. And that is really all there is to the redstone. I've had to cover everything up, and I did encounter a weird issue where the crying obsidian and the obsidian didn't seem to have the same effect so even though I thought the Crying Obsidian and Obsidian had the same blast resistance, when I had Crying Obsidian here, the basalt would actually blow up, and I've tested this several times. And when we use Obsidian, that doesn't happen, and I'm not entirely sure why that is, but it's just something we had to sacrifice for this display, because I do think the Crying Obsidian looks better than the regular Obsidian, but to be honest, it still looks absolutely amazing. So that is our seven segment display. Um, if you've enjoyed, remember to leave a like, comment, and subscribe down below. My name is Vortex Warp. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.